What do you reckon? That's not bad, mate. I think you can do better. This is literally a treasure map. I'm not even joking. That is the treasure map right there, mate. Oh, that's that's that is the best prospecting mud map I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I'm definitely gonna need to get me like a uh, full film crew to come out with me back in Australia, just so I have uh, breakfast and lunch brought to me every day. Cindy, compliments to the chef. He sent me kisses. <laughs> I got kids. And a lunch box. I've got all the essentials, all the batteries, memory cards, and toilet paper. Because my mission today is to make it to a place called The Gates. The gates are these massive bedrock walls that Rex and Darren are telling me are loaded with gold. And I need to get out there to do some recce for the film crew. Sit around here somewhere. And if you don't know what recce is, it's finding the banana amongst the Vaseline. Or the gold amongst all the other gravel in the creek. Yep, I'm out here doing my business and this little guy does not care. He's like, I'll help. I appreciate it though. I'm not like a massive fan of, of an audience. What I was hoping for and what I've discovered on this trip is that it's so much more than just the gold. Yes, it's a fantastic opportunity to come and see a place that I would never get to see otherwise. Claims like this are incredibly rare and the gold is amazing. Doing massive trips like this out of your comfort zone, out of your safety zone, with no support network around you, is how you develop. Because even as little as 12 months ago, there's no way I would find myself out here prospecting for gold with complete strangers in a foreign land. This is a wild film crew out of their element, hunting for content. Will they starve? We will not know until the winter season has passed. You must approach with caution or they may attack. It was a jandal. <laughs> <laughs> I have to walk past this spot to get up to the gates and um, these guys are waiting. So, let's do it. Should we do it? I think you should have another crack in there. Third time's the charm. Let's see if you can slap the gold out of my hand this time. <laughs> not that much dirt left in there. You'll need more water. Oh, Thran threads, now we're more grit. You're right, you pulled out that big rock for me and yep. man, we got way more materials. This, this is like, I can't let them touch this because we'll kick it out of my hands, guaranteed. You're testing the Anzac bloody, oh, bloody relationship slapping yeah. hands out of people's heads. Well, you know, we've got to test to see where our boundaries are, you know? <laughs> you might note that I've got the boys at a safe distance. Ah, <laughs> uh, one. One. After all the gold I managed to pull out of it, you really would have thought there would have been more than one little flake in there. And for the sake of the relationship... Can we have a look, can we? No, I'll let you do it. Can I? You can do it. Can I? Darren hasn't done it. Didn't oh. have it, it. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> So my hike continued, following my treasure map, four kilometers upstream. And just looking on my Thram map, yeah, that makes a whole lot of sense. According to my map, I'm right here. Mmm, I can smell the treasure. It's finally opened up enough where there's some gravel on the side with only pools of water because it's a real bugger to walk in that. Rex and Darren are telling me above the gates it gets quite sketchy, quite dangerous, so I'm going to wait for them to join me so they can take me through the correct path. Darren and Rex's warning about what it was like above those gates was incredibly accurate. Whilst there was decent gold to be found above that point, that's a lot of flower gold. There was also extremely difficult terrain that needed extreme caution. And what ended up being a solo trip above the gates gave me some fresh perspective on where I need to brush up on my outdoor skills. Hey, it's Chris on radio. Does anyone copy? As well as a healthy reminder of just how powerful Mother Nature really is. <gasps> oh my god. In the meantime, I've got all of this bedrock over here to have a play in. I can see why they said to come here. There's no way there isn't gold trapped in these cracks. I know there's gold here, because I can see it. Pretty rare day when you just see two pieces of gold floating around on the bedrock on the surface. Just some bacon and egg on my face. Whenever I come to a new place like this that is overwhelmingly good looking, I look for concentrators. Concentrators are anything that funnels gravel. This is a prime example. You can see we've got bedrock on this side, bedrock on this side, and a lot of gravel up the guts of it. And I'm thinking right where these big rocks have dropped out might be a good place to start. Hello, bird. Ugh. 
I'm not seeing much black sand. I didn't see any gold on the way down, so I'm not confident. But, but I was wrong. Oh my god, surface gravels. That is just surface gravels out of that concentrator. They have some nice sized flakes, but obviously on this claim, we're not just looking for 10 nice flakes, we're looking for a whole bunch of gold. Let's see what's in the bedrock. This one was directly off the bedrock, but it was smooth and not fractured. Fractured bedrock's what holds the gold. Oh, I'm blind, I can't see a thing. The question becomes, is it any better sitting on that flat, smooth bedrock than it was above it? Um, it's about the same, but that's a nice flake. Rex and Darren are telling me this isn't their nugget claim. It's a lot of fine flower gold, so it's what I'm used to. Finding a flake like that is quite nice. Prospecting is different from mining in that I am searching for where the deposits are and not trying to extract all the gold out from where I find it. The whole reason that Darren and Rex invited me out, not only to collaborate, but was to get another body on the ground to do some prospecting for them. You see, Darren and Rex have a massive claim, but finding gold is like finding a needle in a haystack, and at the moment, Darren and Rex own the hay shed. This is about average what I've been getting every single pan at the moment. Now, my little bird friend, that's not a lot of gold. That last pan came from right here, and my thought is this little creek is either concentrating gold that's been laid across this bedrock from the main river, or there's a bench deposit sitting up there that's slowly shedding out. Once again, didn't really see much black sand or gold on the way down, so yeah, one, one little nano. Goes to show you that prospecting even on the world's best claims is a difficult thing to do. It's not as simple as what you see on camera where you just get the best creme de la creme. Oh, there's a lot of misery and hard work in between each one of them. This is my reality for the next several hours, slowly tracing and tracking the gold to try and figure out where it was sitting. Some pans had good gold and some pans had next to nothing. Hey, you! Yeah, you, you skinny, dweeby looking prospecting kid. Do you need a snuffer bottle? Um, no? Shut up! Yes, you do. You need Thram. Thram suckers. It'll suck the chrome off a Chevy. I kind of always thought that they were a little bit, uh, rusty. Thram snuffer bottles. Now made with more Darren. I started way down there and I've done a hole about every three feet all the way up past where I got the first couple of really good pans through this trench I've managed to go all the way out to the gates up there. I've not had so many empty holes in such a long time. So I'm going to go onto the other side of the river where there's a lot flatter bedrock with a lot more velocity of water going over it. And as it would turn out this would be the right move because I was about to find a whole lot of gold. It looks like I've got plenty of fine grain black sand. That's a good start, but I want the coarse chunky stuff. And we've got some flower gold with it. So usually your gold will match your black sand size. See how all the black sand's very fine and so is our gold? That's already more gold than I got in the last five or six pans on the other side. So it bodes well that there could be something up here. Now we're getting a little bit better. Three quarters of a pan of dirt and I managed to pull out a whole bunch of flower gold and a couple of nice flakes. Because the bedrock behind me elevates up, it means that the water velocity drops. There's more friction and the gold should drop out on it. Oh, there's that tan color. That bodes a lot better. There's a little bit of clay in that too, so with some luck, this will be an okay pan. Could already tell you this is going to be an okay pan because we've got three specks on the second riffle. The question is, do those three specks have friends? And the answer is yes. 
Yes, they do. They have a lot of friends. Ah, oh. my little bird surveillance camera is letting you know that I've been getting about this much gold every single pan on this side of the creek. That's just prospecting for you, right? You have to keep trying and persisting and persisting, and eventually you'll burn the hay shed down and find the needle. <laughs> Sometimes you just need a lot of petrol to do it. That's fracturing bedrock and that's what I've been looking for all day. Finally found it at almost 5 p.m. Straight away, this is looking like an okay pan. I got gold up on that second riffle, which is been the indicator for good gold so far. Oh, oh, oh my God. That's a pan, bro. <laughs> oh, oh, I've been at this for like almost seven hours and I thought I was going to have to go back to camp and just tell the guys that I really didn't have much success up here. They said that there was good gold here, but they'd only really checked one area. And I looked at that area and it was okay, but it wasn't great. Oh, bro, that is a pan and a half. They are nice. I've got pieces of gold just sitting on the bedrock. Oh, 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 can you see that? Oh, what? Oh, that's a big flake. That's a real big flake. Look at that. That's unreal. I've never picked gold up like that before. <laughs> wow. Every pan so far has been chock full of gold, just like that first one. And this one is no exception. Look at that. That's nuts. It might have taken all day, but I found it. I found the gold, guys. Yep, every damn pan, guys. Freaking loaded. I don't have time to work this whole thing. I have done this section in about 45 minutes. Okay, okay, this is all 100% yabby pump dirt. If I was getting that kind of gold with just a little shovel, hopefully this will be much better. But promises from gold prospectors are like promises from politicians, not really trustworthy. The working theory is that because gold's the heaviest thing in the creek, it sinks to the lowest possible point in the bedrock and your shovel can't get to it because of these nooks and crannies. So a little hand dredge sucks those pieces of gold up out of those crevices and you should get them in your pan. With all the gold I was getting using nothing more than a shovel, you would expect that there would be some okay gold with a yabby pump. And... Yep, <laughs> I thought that was done, but there is. Ah, <gasps> oh, yeah, boy. That's just the dregs at the bottom of the hole. If I had found this at the start of the day, we would have been sitting on probably a couple of grams by now. But you know what? Who cares? I've found it now. And I don't think I can get away with saying that I didn't have a successful day. New Zealand, baby, you just keep getting better and better.